Your Honor, so you know when you sign up to do these shows, it's a year, a year and a half out. Or, so mm -hmm. when we agreed that I was going to do this, and then, you know, you kind of start in one direction and you turn and it ended up being something completely different. But the thing that has been consistent is this is my first solo show here in Colorado Springs. So I was viewing this as an introduction. Hello, I'm Melissa. I'm new here. I'm not new here anymore, but because it's been a year and a half plus. Right. But um, I'm originally from Detroit, where I got my BFA in fine art photography. And I say that because a lot of my work and a lot of questions people have asked me is, why don't you have any color in anything? The reason is my background is black and white photography. So I don't really love color. I'm just going to be honest about it. And so you can tell a lot of the work is muted. So um, I want to start by talking about this piece that's behind Chelsea here. This piece is called Miles of Grief, and this is part of my introduction here. And because I arrived here in 2019, just ahead of COVID, um, and I came here because my kid was in college and they were settled and it was all good, and then of course COVID hit. So a lot of the miles that I talk about in this piece is the miles between here and Detroit. Um, your parents, most of you, so you know, when your kid needs you, you go. So I would pack Hope up in the car, because I couldn't leave her behind, and we would go back and forth. Um, and the first two years I was here, it was a lot of miles of mm. Nebraska. Mm. I'll, I'll <laughs> a lot of, a lot of her, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, but what's really significant about this piece, or what this piece really speaks to, is my dog Hope. Um, which is what this show is named after, Finding Hope. So after my divorce and in the mucky years and months that followed that, um, Hope was part husky. And I don't know if you guys know anything about huskies, but they need to move. And the faster and the farther you can go, the better off it is. Well, I didn't know at the time that's exactly what I needed. And I would wait until it got dark and I would literally strap Hope on, I had a belt, and I would attach myself to the dog and I would wait till dark because I was not fit for public consumption at the time. So I waited for dark and I would strap myself on and we would just walk and walk and walk. And where I lived at the time, it was a grid and all the houses were bungalows and they all looked the same. And a lot of times I'd stop and I'd look up and I'd think, oh my God, I have no idea where I'm at. I have literally no idea because all the houses look the same and I didn't pay attention to what street we were on. But the thing about being attached to Hope is at some point we'd end up home safe and sound. And it didn't matter if we walked out the door and went right or left. We always, miles and miles, I couldn't tell you how far on any given day that we would travel. I know in her old age, we were still doing three miles a day. So a lot of miles strapped to Hope. And the other thing about Hope that I think is kind of interesting, she, as much as she liked to go, she hated to be alone. And I, being from Michigan, I love the water. And she learned to swim and she learned to like it, but she also learned to paddleboard with me which I don't know if you've ever been on a stand-up paddleboard, but to have a dog on there with you, <laughs> it's no small feat. So in that centerpiece, you can see there's a hint of waves. Um, most of the miles that we had traveled were on foot, but there were a couple miles that we actually were able to do, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to do on the water. So that, that piece there is miles of grief because it took a lot of miles to get here. And I was thinking about that when I was getting ready for this talk. And I have to say, although the miles to get here were foggy <laughs> and long, I think this was the best decision I've ever made. Mm -hmm. Like coming here to Colorado Springs has made all the difference in my life. Um, opening the gallery was a dream that I had when I retired. And it didn't happen, right? But I got here and I've met my people. I found my tribe. It's just been like, I just feel so very grateful to be here. And I think that's why, you know, originally the show was going to be an introduction to me, but I'm so grateful. And that's where the title Finding Hope 
comes from because I didn't want this to be all like, oh, you had this really shitty beginning. It's like, yeah, but it brought me here and that has made all the difference. So um, that being said, I'm also going to then track sort of this piece here because they're kind of related. So Hope passed in October and as we had gotten here and gotten comfortable here, I got to be more aware of where I was at, right? It wasn't just blindly following her. And, but I still like to walk at night. And the reason I like to walk at night turned out to be because I'd have my headphones on and I'd be walking to the music and then it'd be like I'm on a catwalk and, and stuff. So it recently, this is a very new piece because I had to go home. Um, to visit my kid and take care of some things. And this was the first time coming home alone to an empty house, right? And I needed something for when I got home to make it right. So this piece is me doing my little, I still walk at night. This is me with my headphones doing my thing. Never in her living years was she ever behind me. <laughs> she was always in front, mm -hmm. but I just feel her presence all the time. So this is where we're at now. She's still with me. But this is me dancing my way through the dark streets of where I live now, which is also on a grid, so I know. <laughs> I know. I just do the same route over the time and I don't have to think about it. So um, the piece behind Robert here is called The Dog Walker. Um, and that's just because the power that I felt and the safety that I felt being attached to her. Never did I ever feel like I was you know, in jeopardy anything other than getting lost. And I even knew then that she would get us home. So that piece there is just, you know, a tribute to her. Um, I'm gonna switch gears here and come to this because this is also, this is the path of friendship. Um, and this, these 16 are a smaller version of this one. And I made this one um, based on a story that, well, it's actually two stories combined. And I'm a storyteller, so I'm going to tell you both of them. So the yellow leaf that you see in these appears a lot in my work. <laughs> it's everywhere. Um, in the first year of my divorce, my brother and his family took me on vacation with them. And we went to Key West. And my brother and his wife had been there a few years before. And we did this kayaking tour through the mangrove forest. And I, if you don't know anything about mangroves, it's actually a freshwater plant that lives on the coast of the ocean, right? It actually is part of the ecosystem and it's hugely important. So when my brother and sister-in-law had done this tour years before, they had the story that their guide had told them about the suicide leaf. And my brother kept pestering our new guide saying, tell about the suicide leaf, tell about the suicide leaf. At the time, my kid had been suicidal. So every time he said the word suicidal, I just cringed. It was like, stop talking, just stop mm -hmm. talking. Um, and, but the guy had no idea what he was talking about here, yeah. so he's like, whatever. Um, it was really close to the end of it, and he's like, oh my god, do you mean the sacrificial leaf? <laughs> no. What? Wait, wait, yes. So the story goes, because the mangrove is a freshwater plant living in the ocean, it filters all the salt and all the nutrients that it can't absorb to one leaf. That one leaf turns yellow and falls off and then another leave is chosen. So it's a sacrificial leave, not a suicidal leave. So I was thinking about all the sacrifices that we as humans make, right? Um, as parents, as friends, as all the things. So this piece with the sacrificial leave, um, Shortly after that trip, I had taken another trip because there was no reason to be home at this point. <laughs> and I had a good person to watch my dog. So I had gone to um, Ghost Ranch in New Mexico to take a workshop. And one of the workshops that I took, um, it was pretty packed. And the instructor had us go out and walk the labyrinth. And I had never heard of a lamb, I mean, I've heard of it because of the movie, but I didn't really know what that was, or that it was a meditative process that you walk. And this labyrinth was huge. And we all got outside, and we're all gathering around it um, to walk it. And I'm like, okay, um, I don't know about this. I, I don't know. I was apprehensive about everything at the time. And after everybody had kind of gotten in line and done their thing, there was just a few of us left. 
And the one woman that I was standing next to was like, I don't want to go last. I was like, okay, I'll go last. It's, I'm always last. It's fine. <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, whatever. You know, so walking the labyrinth and being the last. And I had my own little pity party, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, nobody sees me, nobody blah, blah, blah. And, but it's a meditative thing. And as you're walking, and I've learned this from being in therapy, when you're walking, you're stimulating both sides of your brain, right? The conscious and the, the uh, subconscious and the conscious brain. So, you, you know, my con subconscious brain is like, oh, you're nothing, you're always last. Blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, there's this argument going on in my head. And I'm crying. And we get to the center of it, and she does her thing, and it's beautiful, and everybody's like, oh, serene and stuff. And it's like, okay, it's time to go back out of the labyrinth and we're going to do it the same way and i was like okay i'll get in the back and she's like no 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 last in first out i was like wait what <laughs> i'm now leading this out and that really made such an impact in my brain it was like all the pity party going in and all the sacrifices that i made coming in and then turning around and coming out and leading it's like no melissa you're capable of leading Right? You're capable of this, and these people are following you, and they're trusting you, and, and it was an amazing experience. And this piece is built based on that experience. But then I was thinking about it, and it's a big piece, and I was thinking about all the little lambrants that have come into my life since. I've met some friends that have had them in their backyard, and right, it's just been this, since it's been introduced, it's come up again and again and again. So I was thinking about all the friends that I've had. Like, I'm not a young woman. And so this is a series, and each and every one of these is somebody that I've known and somebody that I've had a relationship with and that it's affected me. And I wanna make sure that I'm clear on this, that all the, the yellow leaves on this and all the sacrifices I've made for other people aren't necessarily bad. I would do it again, right? Some of them you know, maybe took more than I would have liked, but. And I love that in each and every one of these, there's a different number of leaves, the pattern's different, as in each relationship that I've had, right? I just, and then to be able to see this hung together, right? I just mm -hmm. love this because I don't have room in my apartment to <laughs> hang that many things. So, um, so that's the story of those. I'm gonna skip around here because we've been talking about friends. Um, and I'm going to switch over here to at my table. So this one, and I love this one hanging here because it does look completely different than it does in my apartment, especially when the light hits it. You can really see the texture, especially in the circle. And I left that circle specifically textured because to me it reminded me of the moon. And when I lived back home, I had a group of women that met monthly on the full moon. Um, so I love that that's that. This piece at my table is as much about learning my own self-worth as it is about boundaries, right? And there's a quote or a meme or something that says, you know, once you learn your own worth, you're comfortable eating alone. Um, so that's that piece, but it's also about having a close circle of friends that get your attention and the best of you and then it kind of ripples up and it's taken me a long time to realize that not everyone deserves that part of me right only my close friends i think for a long time i gave more than than was necessary to the wrong people so that's where the circle kind of gets a little backed off it's like yeah i, I still love you and i'll still do for you but not at the level of my close people so that one's about boundaries as well. Um, I think that's the last one. Um, this one, I love this. Um, this one actually I showed here at the WAX exhibit a year, two years ago. Um, and it looked completely different. And I had shipped this back to Detroit for the best of the best show and it got damaged in shipping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I insured it. I insured it, yay, smartest thing I ever did. And of course we went back and forth with the insurance company because they kept saying, well, you could just paint over it. It's like, I can't paint over it. It's got 
inches of wax and each layer of wax has a different color added to it. There was no way I could have repaired it. So in order to collect the insurance money on it, I had to prove that I destroyed it. And wow, <laughs> this was at the time the biggest piece I had ever done, the biggest and most complicated piece I had ever done. Up until that point, I had worked really small. And, and I'm heating it up with the torch and I'm scraping the wax off and I'm crying and I'm thinking, who the hell do you think you are going this big? Right? You should have just stayed small. You should have just stayed in your lane. And you did, 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 did. and as I was crying, and it, the center of it burned. And I was like, yeah, okay, fine. And it sat in the corner for a long time. And another pity party <laughs> that I had over this piece. And then I thought, no, no, I'm not going to go out that way. I was able to keep the board, and you can see the underpainting on it. And I was like, no, I'm going to rework this, and I'm going to rework this to be able to tell this as a comeback story. So what I love about this particular piece is this star that's gold mm -hmm. in the center. In a previous life, I was a portrait photographer, mostly children. And this star was what I used to mark where I wanted them to stand, right? So I'll go stand on the star, and, and that was their marker for the lighting and everything. So I was like, okay, that had a star in it in the beginning. But this is a gold star, and I don't know about you, but I'm of the age of when you did great things in school, you got a gold star, right? So this is me being my own best friend and giving myself the gold star. So this piece is actually called, Who Do You Think You Are? Because, well, I don't know who I am exactly yet. I'm still figuring that out, but I think I deserved a gold star for being able to bring this one back. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And again, the gold leaves, but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't all sacrifice. Right? So, does anybody have any questions? Do you want to know about other pieces or? Oh, the, the one there? Yes. Yeah, so that's a cry for help. Um, and I don't know if you've read the artist statement, but um, I talk about um, hope finding me on the floor. Mm -hmm. Right, with not being able to get up and face the day. And I love that behind her, because I think my soul probably was a dog at some point. Um, I love that the dog that's with her is howling, like they're the ones crying for help. Like, man down, man down, come come and check this out. And you know, I don't know that Hope knew she was signing up for this task. <laughs> Right, and maybe she came at it a little apprehensive at first, but she definitely showed up exactly when I needed her to. So.